Good morning. You listen to FloridaLA.net, and I'm Kemp Har. This morning, my guest is Bart Bedica, the executive director of the NTCA, the National Tile Contractors Association. Bart, how you doing? I'm great, Kemp, and thanks for having me. It's always good to visit with you. Yeah, I wanted to catch up with you about the TSP virtual event that was end of October. Before we get to that, though, let's catch up on a couple other things. Tell us how the tile business is doing now. It obviously, Kemp, this last nine, ten months since February, right after the Tice show in January, yeah. everything changed. I was in Spain in February and did an event, and two weeks later, the world was upside down. Yeah. And I, I think the tile industry went through its first two or three months of shock like everybody else. We were very fortunate, I believe, in the construction and flooring industry to be deemed essential in most states. But what we feel is, is that tile held its own pretty well. And in fact, in reality, as the first 60, 90 days shifted and people were in a new world of a lot of people working from home, we started to see that the residential market, especially our high-end custom residential tradesmen and installers, started reporting about how busy they were getting and how much they were bidding. Of course, the commercial market was put on hold for a while. Projects were put on hold. And when that picked up, then the commercial market gained some momentum as well. So right now, everyone's pretty busy. We have concerns moving into next year for sure, especially on the commercial side. So it's your sister association. It's the Tile Council of North America that actually tracks the statistics around shipments. And I know they had a second quarter report which showed it being way down, but they haven't come out with a third quarter report yet, have they? I have not seen the third quarter report. I'm sure it's it's coming very, very soon. Well, at Total Solutions Plus, Lady Creed International, gave a report. The recovery in the third quarter was pretty significant for the tile industry. So I think we'll see that we did come back in a more positive note, and especially the reports are, Kemp, that the remodeling market, where people really decided to invest in their homes, really helped the rebound. And tile fits remodeling very, very well. I think that's where we have some level of optimism. Yeah, let me run through some dynamics that we tracked. So on the residential side, the builder's numbers are strong. The uh, existing home sales are strong. The remodel investments are strong. On the commercial side, not so much. We've got concerns over whether people are going to go back to offices. We've got concerns in retail. We've got concerns in hospitality. So it only looks like education and health care are the sectors that are going to be okay. So that's been kind of a downer. And then we've got some other dynamics that we're watching. On the residential side, we've got the lookalike products. And they've been making an impact. I think 19 was the first year that the tile market didn't grow, or maybe it was flat. And it was because of these lookalike products. So give us an update on that. Well, there's no doubt about it. And there's a lot of factors, I think, that go into, you know, lookalike products having effect against products like like tile. and, 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 And I would say probably the wood industry as well. And... Some of it is obviously price, as you said, and and the cost or availability of labor. Part of our problem for a while has been having actual installers available to do some of the work. And and if you can't do that work on a timely basis, then a lot of consumers will quickly opt for an alternative product. But also some of it is the fact that some of the lookalike products, particularly the LVT and LVP industry, did a good job of marketing. And without a doubt, that hurt us in tile. That being said... We feel that our products do outperform products like that in where we have to protect our areas, such as in moisture areas, um, yeah. bathrooms and kitchens and, and laundry rooms. And, and we do feel that we have a real opportunity and we've made inroads where, uh, where these products don't succeed, which is on vertical surfaces and walls and, and more importantly, a big, big movement towards exterior applications, patios and decks and living spaces outside and three-season porches and things like this. And obviously, we feel we've done well there. But but there's no doubt that that category or those categories, the lookalike products, have made inroads. And we're going to have to continue, especially like in multifamily units and apartment complexes. And if there's a movement towards remodeling office space and, and maybe making those office spaces as I've heard in a lot of markets, you know, in the living spaces or, or residential, we've got to find a way to continue to promote and market ceramic tile and porcelain tile against those competitive products. Some of these lookalike products have been saying they're waterproof, and most people know the only truly waterproof. I mean, yeah, the product itself might be waterproof, but the true waterproof installation is the tile floors. And I'm just wondering, I know you've done the com, but you just need to pound your chest on the waterproof thing, don't you? 
Yeah, we absolutely do. And we were working as a collective group with the Coverings partners on several campaigns and launched some of those campaigns. And we picked up a little bit more momentum with that. And you mentioned YTile.com. The Ceramic Tile Distributors Association and Tile Council of North America have have spearheaded more efforts with that information and social media and, and, and marketing campaign. And the reality is, is, you know, even with Tile... We try to be honest about it, and waterproofing is a system, yeah. and it's not necessarily a product. Right. And so you're only as good as the substrate underneath and the uh, waterproofing membranes that you put on. And, and, and so what we really try to promote is that when our system is installed properly, the tile with the proper products and you follow industry standards, that this is when you can have products that really perform. And one of the most unfortunate things, and, and it is a concern we have about the lookalike products, is that any failures, especially moisture or waterproofing failures that can create either damage to living space or mold or mildew, are, are just a black eye for the flooring industry. So all we generally try to promote or ask is that products are marketed and promoted and installed where they belong. Mm-hmm. And that's really what we're going to continue to, to hang our hat on and try to create awareness campaigns around, which is to make real sure that the product that you're going to use you know, fits the application. If it's a laundry room or if it's a shower or if it's a bathroom with a, a linear drain, you know, be very careful about the products that you're selecting and make sure that they're warranted and, and guaranteed for those areas. And don't just look at marketing, but look at warranties and then look at uh, proven track rec- records of success. And obviously, if we're right about that and these products that were sold for those areas don't perform, you know, Kemp, we're going to find that out in a very short period of time and, you know, that'll you know, that'll that'll come out basically with failures, and we hate to see that. Yeah, so you think the pendulum will swing. We actually started this interview to talk about a show. I'm about out of time, but the Total Solutions Plus meeting was uh, end of October. It was going to be in Palm Springs. It went <laughs> virtual. What, what kind of audience did you have? Did you have good attendance on the virtual, or how did it go? First of all, it was brand new for us. I mean, yeah. this was a complete virtual event you know we had seen some other associations do this and uh, as as tile groups we had no experience with that and it definitely was a process of trying to figure out total solutions plus is a full two-day complete industry conference as you know right you know trying to take that kind of concept with professional speakers that's really a concept that's based upon networking and making it a virtual event was a real challenge so we broke it up in short segments over five days rather than two full days. That was a good decision. We brought professional speakers in and industry speakers in, uh, and that was a good decision. And and I think our participation was good. We absolutely learned a lot about what kind of virtual uh, content works. Um, you know, having roundtable discussions was very effective. A, a little happy hour at night where everybody kind of toasted and said how much they missed each other was very effective. You know, we had... Several hundred people participate. We hope we don't ever have to do a complete virtual event again. We do hope that we'll be back in Jacksonville, Florida next October, and then we'll go back to Palm Springs the year after that. Okay. All right. Great. Well, that's two other questions I had for you. Thanks so much for catching us up again. Been talking to Bart Bedica, the executive director with the NTCA, and you've been listening to Kempar and FloridaLady.net.